This is Pod Populi, podcast for the people. The Great Love Debate. It's the Great Love Debate. The Great Love Debate. It's the Great Love Debate. Hi again, everyone. It's Brian Howie. Welcome to The Great Love Debate, the world's number one dating and relationship podcast. Since 2015, I am back here in the very fine studios of Pod Populi, podcast for the people. I'm at the one in Boca Raton, Florida. Boca Raton means rat's mouth. They probably got to change that. I don't know. Um, About once a year, we take the temperature on what's going on out there. It's called our state of the date. A lot of good, a lot of bad. A lot of strange, a lot of things evolving. We've spent the last couple of years sort of coming out of a fog. A lot of people are still in a fog. A lot of people never want to come out of the fog. I don't think those people are listening to this show. But if you are listening to this show, I think you want to know what's going out there and get some perspective. You guys hear my perspective a lot on this stuff, but I brought in some voices of the people who are going to give us their perspective, personal and otherwise, on what they think is going on out there in 2023 as far as the state of the date. So as always, if you are listening to this in 2025, it's fun to look back on what it was in 2023. But 2020, 2021, 2022, I don't think we're as good as uh, we thought they would be at the time. Um, But the clouds have parted and uh, big storm systems bring bright sunny skies. So to my right, he is the host of the Sabas Perspective podcast. He's a man of the people. He knows a lot about a lot of things, even though he's fairly young. You are how old? I am 22 years old. Sebastian Panoranda, is that right? That is correct. Oh, that's pretty good. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. How about yourself? Uh, good. Welcome to the Great Love Debate. Well, he's been on our much. stage before, too, so he tells it like it is. And to his right, my left, she is the host of the Hashtag No Filter podcast. Is that accurate? That is accurate. Good the, job. The slightly lovelier than Sebas, Julie Lauren. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. I'm really excited to be here. How are you overall? Just give me a temperature of it. How Are you... And this is you, meaning the general you, meaning ladies in there. Can I say you're in your 30s? I'm 37. Oh, very <laughs> precise. I would have let you off the hook with just in your 30s. <laughs> 37 is the, is the sweet spot for this show because 37 is... Is it? 37? Yeah, there are a lot of challenges at 37. There are mm-hmm. unique challenges at 37 that do not exist at 27 True. Or, or 47. Good point. Um, are you fundamentally optimistic or pessimistic? And, and you, I mean, you and your gal posse, when you sit around drinking wine, like you are now. <laughs> like I'm drinking wine right now. Is it more of a bitch fest than it was five years ago? Or is it like there's some glimmer of hope? It's interesting. I think I do have a good number of friends that are very pessimistic and cynical. And then there are others who aren't. Me personally, I, I'm. It's you have to be optimistic because... It, to me, what's the alternative? Like, this is your life. But I do have a lot of friends who are a little more cynical. You, it is a better way to be optimistic. Yeah, it just at least makes you, it easier. You have hope. If you are pessimistic going into every date, yep. and, uh, you know, since the very first day we started this podcast, we said that the women look for red flags and the men look for green lights. And yep. if you're looking for red flags, you are dating with a uh, fundamental amount of pessimism. Yep. That's not good. But if you go into every encounter, every opportunity, every possibility with, at the very least, maybe. Right. Exactly. It should be fun. But I do think, and I'm sure we'll talk more about this. When you get to my age, I have friends who, you know, I've been married. I have friends Mm -hmm. who have never been married, haven't been in a lot of serious relationships. Like your clock is ticking. Like, you know, we will get into that. We will get into that. Uh, Seba, so you, um, you're in your early twenties. Yes. A lot of women in their early twenties, first of all, want to be called women. We can't say girls anymore. I don't like women. I like girls. Or yeah, the older girls. the woman is, the more likely she is to want to be called a girl. That's a strange thing. But the women in their early 20s, they want to be called it's women. It's an interesting phenomenon. Um, they do not necessarily want to get into any kind of a relationship. They do not want to say, they want to do their thing. They want to grow their business. They don't want to do. Does that make it hard for you when you're um, looking to lock down a lady? In a sense, it does. If, in fact, you're looking to lock down a lady? Currently, I'm not. I'm currently not looking to lock down a lady. <laughs> I love that. Let's uh, talk about that. I'm very honest with it. I think... If most men were honest with what their intentions were, there'd be a lot less issues going forward. But the problem is that a lot of people don't like to communicate what their intentions truly are. They like to kind of play games. Oh, I don't really know what I should do. I don't know what we are. I don't want to put a label on it. And that's where a lot of the toxicity comes in in most modern relationships. But from my perspective, I think that most women don't want to get into anything committed at this age because this is when their value is at its peak. 
right? They're young, they're feisty. Oh God, sorry, Joe. I'm feisty. <laughs> their value is at its peak. Their, their value- What does that even mean? I'll, I'll explain it very simply. <laughs> God. Their value in the sense that this is when they'll likely be the prettiest aesthetically, right, in their life. Excuse me. Oh my God. I don't think you're right. You don't think I'm right? I, I think. You th I think well, I'm just because right. they're younger. You, so they're you're, not, you're not uh, taking in, into consideration how much her confidence affects her aesthetic. And the way she carries herself into her 30s and, and her, I, I always say a woman finds her way through her teens, she finds her body in her 20s, she finds her face in her 30s, and she finds herself in her 40s. Mm -hmm. And uh -huh. you'd be surprised at how that opens up a whole positive aesthetic that um, sometimes even a smile looks better on her than anything in her 20s. Uh, agreed, agreed, right? Women could- I will kid coog it up with you. And beautiful, you beautiful. Some there, there's some beautiful seven. cougars, right? There's some beautiful women <laughs> in her 40s. A lot of beautiful, but I, I get what you're saying too, because when you're in your 20s, like your metabolism is I think that you might I think mean, that their body is at their peak because they don't have to do much and it just is, is yes. like that. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, not, even, not even just that, right? It's the simple fact that they're, you know, as a guy, right? As a guy, yeah. young man, what do they want? They want to be impressionable on their women, right? Yeah. They want to take care of their women. They want to be that provider. And that provider doesn't just come financially, but also as a mentor to show them a little bit of the world, to have them experience it through their lens. The older women get traditionally, they're a lot less willing to fall into that role than they would be when they're younger. Correct. Because they're a lot more impressionable when they're younger than when they're older. You know, when you're 23, when I was 23, I, I pretty much went out with two lines and it was, you want another drink or would you like to do a shot? That's it. That's all I had to say to get somebody's attention. Well, and the, probably there, that was kind of That's it. what you're focused on. At that I age. didn't have to really engage in a deep conversation. It, it, you know, it was always usually some loud place. It was like, what was your name again? You want to get out of here? Tin Roof and Delray, yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it was something like that and it was fine. You didn't have to do. So, you know, it really was just good looking young dudes looking at good looking young women and you kind of would pair off. And, but at that time, back in the day, I, can think I think that people at 22, 23, 24, they wanted to then go out the next day, go out again. And hopefully, you know, they, they, I, I you know, I've said they want to go home because they want to go out, mm -hmm. meaning they wanted to lead somewhere. Now, People don't even go on dates. They go out, they hang out, they meet up, they hook up, and then it's like, what are we doing here? You at, know, at which is your fine. Age, at his age. At his yes, age, yeah. which at my makes age. it which which is both good for you and bad for you because we can pretend that emotions are not involved at any age. They always get they're always involved. I, I think it's a lot more detrimental than beneficial for people my age to get emotions involved. I think it's a lot more uh, detrimental to get into that culture of constantly hooking up without emotion because I think you are right. Emotion is always there, whether they try to negate it or not. Right. It will always be present and it just ends up doing more harm than good for individuals in that culture. That's true. Have you had a, a girlfriend? hundred percent. How long? <laughs> my longest one. I've had about five in my whole life. Right. You're 22. Three, three that I would say were actually very serious, that I was actually very committed to them. I saw a future Which with means them. what, three weeks? Uh, no, I'd say about uh, a year and a half. Oh, wow, good for when you. When did you start it? Because you're, I mean, you, like at 15? Yes, right. so so and my first one. Carving your name into a tree? Yeah, carving the name into the tree. <laughs> in South Florida, it's more like the beach, you yeah, know, a golf course. Carve your name in the sand, yeah. it's true. and then metaphorically, the wave washes it out. Let, let like me get the happened. driver and let me put it on the golf course, and then maybe that would be <laughs> a little bit more accurate to South yeah. Florida. But yeah, around 15, 16 years old is when I got into my first one. And like always, you know, young love, you think it's going to last forever. You think it's very immortalized and nothing could ever go wrong. I love this person. I want to spend the rest of my life with them. Very puppy dog high school romance kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Later on, I found out the reality of the world. It's not really that simple. It's not as romanticized as some people like to make it out. And later on in my later relationships in my life, I learned that there was a lot more complexity. Uh, my second one was when I first joined the military. I was in the United States Army for four years. And when I first joined, went through the whole stereotype of the difficulty of communication, not being able to be there, deployments, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, so I saw the reality of how a lot of people dealt with their relationships in adjacent to my own because a lot more people in the military are married at a younger age. They have kids. I had a lot of friends that had kids when they were 22, 23 years old. Uh, so I saw their dynamic and how that played out as well. Um, and then my latest one, was at my tail end of my military career and then kind of now that I was out. And that was probably the best one up to this point, honestly. A lot more mature. 
the first two were very toxic in the sense that, it, again, it was very innocent. So there mm -hmm. was a lot of the nuances of the age that we live in today with technology, social media incorporated, and everything that we do. But the latest one that I had was a lot more mature. Simply, we just were going in two different places in life. We both accepted it. We both said, you know what? We're thankful for the memories. We're thankful for what happened here. And we wish each other the best, but it's just not going to work out. And that was right. it. I think that's positive. Um, Julie, when what is the biggest difference now? So you were married for a while. Uh, about seven years. Okay. What is the difference between when you went into that, when you got out off the ride the first time around, and now, other than, you know, age and the world? Um, is, back the then, I was, because we were together almost 10 years. Back then, I was... I want to say desperate, but I wanted the whole fancy wedding, big, you know, white dress, fancy wedding, the whole shebang. It was more about the wedding rather than the marriage. I mean, I love yeah. my ex-husband. I still do, but it was very, um, uh, I, I like you wanted to the be destination of the wedding. You yes. looked at the wedding as the end game and just getting married. Yeah, and that was what I had to do now right. at 37. I, I, I don't even know if I'll get married again. And if I do, it's like not the first thing I think about, but when you're 20, I guess I was 26, 27. I was like, I need to get married. I was living in New York city. Like everyone was dating. Oh my God. I was like on this fast track to, to being an adult, I guess. And mm -hmm. here we are now. So yeah. Divorced and, <laughs> and younger than ever, <laughs> younger than ever. <laughs> that probably makes it easier for you to date at 37 that you have been married and yes. you have gone through that. Yes. So you're like, you know, that's not necessarily what's crack up to be either. I've done yes. that. Been there, done that, had the white dress. Mm -hmm. Now let me find what I like. Now let right. me find, and you have obviously matured through that experience. We hope. Do you think you're a better catch now than then? I hope. I don't know. And I'm a, I'm a hot mess. But no, I'm, a, I am definitely a better catch. <laughs> you but, graduate from hot mess to beautiful disaster. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> yes, it's exactly. An upgrade. But I will say that there is something different about having been married and being single at 37. It's complicated. We're not going to get into my current situation, but being whatever I am at 37, it's not as I'm not, my friends who have never been married have a harder time. I would say not, right. not because they're not catches. They're amazing, but it's they a also different have to deal mindset. With the question more. Yeah. Well, and they have to deal with, oh, you've never been married, you know, right. Why or me, whatever. But 40, then it's yeah, me yeah. like, why are you divorced? I mean, it, it can be either end of the coin, but there is something about having been married. I've been down the road. Do like, people ask that? Do people ask, why'd you get divorced? Do you do like, yeah. Does it come up as much as like, well, how come you're still single? They ask why you got to, well, that seems very intrusive. I mean, because yeah, people might I, not even know. Well, if it comes up that I've been, I'm, I'm an, oh, I'm an open book. So like, I pretty much will tell you right away that I've been married and divorced. So if they ask, I'll tell them. Do people say that on dates? I haven't dated in a while, but right. I, but I'm, if you were on a date, do you think, is that something people like, how yes. come you got divorced? I, I could definitely see that being yeah. a question. Wouldn't you ask that on a first date? I would ask wouldn't that question. Wouldn't you want to know? No. You don't want to know on a first date what you're getting into? I if don't think kids? you know what you're getting into. I mean, if they've been divorced, sure. If, but why? That's like Fine, saying, fair, hey, fair. I mean, what do I care? Why? But you want to know they've been married. Yeah, I mean, I think that comes up. Have, have you ever been married? That would come up. I get it. That's a reasonable question. But what happened to your marriage? Here's the question I asked that I think it's a relevant question. When did you know it wasn't going to last 50 years? That's what I care about. It's a good question. You know, and that sometimes that answer is when he came home and left me, which is a sad answer too. Or it's when I didn't really want to hang out with him after we got married. Or it's when he asked me. I get that right. question a lot. I think that's a little more nuanced. Yeah. And, 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 but like... I think that's too personal. Why'd you break up? Right. Why'd you but, and your girlfriend break but up? But I also well, find interesting. I've been talking about this with my girlfriend a lot. She's like, I'm 37. She's like 44. She's dating someone for a while now. We've discovered that guys don't care about your past as much. Well, maybe you guys can speak to this. They don't care about as, your past as much. I want to know about all the ex-girlfriends. What happened? Why they break up? Are they still in your life? Do you follow them on Instagram? The guys just don't care about the past. I would say I the don't. guys... The guys I mean, are, in your 30s, like, I assume you're not a virgin at a well, certain right. age. And, and if you had a marriage and great, yeah, I don't care about the past. Um, that's a good question, though. You, you, the, the, the men don't care. The women care why. In my experience, but I'm not why, saying all men. I agree. Why do the women care so much? And they do. Because it has to be some insecurity or some, it, we're girls. We're wired a little crazy. Right. So would you rather have somebody who'd never had a girlfriend or would you rather have somebody who had 500 girlfriends? I personally would rather have a guy who's had a lot of sex than no. Can I talk about that? I'm not talking about, about sex. Oh, I'm talking about sorry, girlfriends. I'm, oh, I don't want too many <laughs> girlfriends. Um, Why? Just to, because I want to be the special one. Well, they weren't. You can still be the special one. I know. I said that on the podcast. There needs to be another term between girlfriend and fiance that separates her yeah. from all the other girlfriends. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because she, you're on that road. It's like, she's not just my girlfriend. I haven't proposed yet, but she is yeah. that. We need to come up with a new term for that. Think um, of it. Get on it. Well, I like to say, you I'm know, working on it. The girl, <laughs> like the girl, capital the girl. T, okay. capital G, that, okay. whatever. But you would, you don't want to know. What if you had four wives? I want to know. I want to know that. Is that a plus? Four wives? No. Two? Uh, I prefer just one. Maybe if they're Arab, <laughs> right? If they're Muslim. <laughs> no, not at the same time. No, no, yeah, not at the same time. Right? Do you care? Because you're young. What do you care, right? No, I, I, I think it really depends on the intention of what you have, right? If your intention is just to fool around, then no one cares whatsoever. Well, I think your intention is always just to fool around until you like, you hope to like them. I, I always I hope think to it like depends. Them. I think it depends on the culture of the individual, right? If they're individuals in their young age, especially my generation coming up yeah. from like, let's say Latin America or the Arab world mm. uh, or Eastern Europe, I think they care a lot more about the past of the girl than let's say a typical American well, I get that. We're going to judge, but don't you, even if you're just hooking up with a girl, so this gets into intent. Uh -huh. How do you have that conversation when you're just out hanging out with a girl? Don't you assume everybody, no matter what they say, hopes to like this person more than anybody else and just fall in love right there? Like, at what age does... No, who, some people no, are why, not, would, no. why wouldn't you want that? I think most... I think... I can speak for myself, really, and other people that I've met across my life, that when you don't want that, it's simply because most of the time, guys prioritizing their own life, their own career, that's the kind of mindset that's been brought up in this new generation. And you think she won't be... She'll get in the way? Yes, 100%. Absolutely. <laughs> wow. I Without mean, that's entirely doubt. possible. Yeah, I'm not I saying I mean, no, wrong. I totally... It can mean, but it, I yeah. can't imagine... Any day since you discovered the girls and the boys that you were not hoping to walk out the door and bump into her and happily ever after. No, I know for a fact some people just want to, I'm not going to say the, not like they just want to hook up. They people just, people just I think they, some people just want to fool around. Yeah. I don't believe that. I think they still oh. hope to like mm -hmm. them. I think they say that because they don't trust the, the long term, the outcome. I, I, I could see they, that. Like you want to hook up and then you hope to want to hook up with her again. Yeah, I'm not talking about me. I'm saying I know. Yeah, I know. Men. People, I think people fool themselves like that. All right. We're going to get into a whole bunch more uh, stuff just like this. Maybe even some more of the hooking up. Um, but I got to take a quick break because got to pay for things like that around here. Um, I'm here with Sebas. I'm here with Julie. Uh, and we will be back right after this. And we are back. So is that the romantic in me that refuses to believe that anybody just wants to have fun, casual, whatever? I believe I, that everybody is hoping to fall in love. I think it might be, honestly. I'm I, wrong. Well, it depends. What, like some people are dating to get married. Some people are dating to just find someone. It's a, what is it? Depends See, on the I person. See, I think I think those people are fooling themselves. Maybe. I, I think that's how they're protecting themselves. Not get hurt. I'm not looking for anything serious. Yeah. I just got divorced. I don't want to deal with this. Fair. They still hope the light bulb goes off. I think I think people could definitely appreciate if they find good company. I think today's world, there's so many options because the world isn't what it was in the 90s or even in the early Why 2000s. Why are there more options? I think there's more options now because you could travel anywhere because you have social media because you can connect we with someone on the complete... 20 years ago. In the sense that the accessibility <laughs> to get there is cheaper now than any other time in history to get to the other side of the planet, right? Is it's it? 100%. It's cheaper? I, I've been to... I mean, I get it was, it was expensive when like Magellan was doing it, but it's. I don't think it's cheaper... Well, maybe, let's just say it's cheaper. Let, let's just say it's let's cheaper. Let's just say it's cheaper. Let's just say it's cheaper. Nowadays, it's cheaper to go you can hop on Tinder. drinks in Singapore? Nowadays, you can hop on Tinder. Yeah. You can change your location to any country on the planet. Yeah. You can meet someone in that country. Yep. You can catch a flight for 100 bucks. The options now are absolutely infinite. Now, what what is the upside? Of, unless you wanted a, um, Tr uh, a, a transatlantic an exotic <laughs> person. Are, there are more than enough options within 10 miles of you 100%. everywhere. So why would somebody need to do that? Other than they're trying to escape where they are and hoping to have a relationship to get them out of there. But if you're like, oh, I'm, I'm tired. Of, I know everybody in my town. You don't. I know everybody That's in my not county. True. No. You don't. You, people, I, friends who have dated in Boca... I mean, Boca Raton, Boca Raton, where we are yeah. there, especially like I'm Jewish and a lot, some of my friends have to date a Jewish guy and there's not that many after a certain point in Boca Raton. Well, no, there's there are no a lot Jewish of Jewish guys, but like, <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? but, but like you, you know, all the Jewish single guys, like you they, don't that you think you do. There's <laughs> thousands and thousands of them. Literally oh. thousands. They think they do because all they have to really do is change where they go, what they do, their social scene. Right. And, and within 
five blocks, they have a whole new Fine, maybe on the apps, like friends who are on Bumble and yeah, Tinder. I could and see how they say like, oh, yes. I've seen everybody, yes, blah, yes, blah, blah, yes. blah. But then they just have to expand that by like five miles or go to Miami or go, or say, rather than travel to the other side of the world and the only place on the other side of the world where they're going to find uh, Jewish men is Jerusalem, <laughs> they should be like, well, maybe I'll try something besides a Jewish man. Well, right, but sometimes it comes, it's like a culture, like their parents, like they can't do, I mean, I can be with a non-Jewish person, but I have friends who I, 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 Was I, that I, 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 I agree with you, yeah. right? Culture yeah. culture. Ma- plays massive. Yeah. And you that. are what, ethnically? I'm Colombian, ethnically. Colombian. So Catholic, religious. So are you looking Do you for- care? Absolutely, I care. Yes, I do. You See? care that she's Catholic or you care that she's Colombian? I care that she's Catholic. Colombian is r- r- irrelevant, to be honest, but that Why she is Catholic? is Catholic. What about Episcopalian? Episcopalian doesn't work for me. Why does you have to be Catholic? Simply because in the Catholic Church, you have to be with someone that's Catholic because your kids have to be raised Catholic, right? That's always the biggest issue when it comes to the religious commonality. I was raised Catholic. You were raised Catholic? Well, awesome, that, Brian. No, not awesome. That doesn't... <laughs> and I was like, who cares? My mother was Episcopalian. Well, that's nice. Awesome. No, it's not. <laughs> it's the same. Like, who, so you want to raise your kids Catholic? Absolutely, 100%. And why is that? Not to go, I, I did a religious episode. Can we not? This do is the always the third episode. episode. I'm just curious. We, we, See, we the one thing that you it. can no, say things. He, I'll he go can. hard. The one things you can say. There's two groups you can say things uh-huh. about. Apparently, apparently, you can make fun of the Irish and you can make fun of the Catholics without repercussions. What about? Oh uh, yeah, I yeah, without right, repercussions. Yeah, because no, everyone you, does you it anyway. Person. So, what do you care? The reason I can't care- you raise them Catholic without her being Catholic? Hundred percent. Right, but it makes it a lot easier if she is right. Yeah. Because let's say I have a Muslim, right? Well, I can't, that's I, extreme. I'm talking about Episcopalian or Baptist or Lutheran or Presbyterian. Who all right, so, so here, let's Christian. look at, we, we can look at the other denominations of Christian, right? Yeah. All the other denominations of Christianity don't like Catholicism, right? That's the commonality that they do not like, right? That's the whole point of Protestantism in the even first place, right? Martin Luther separating from the Catholic Church, right. 1500s, right? Every single denomination that's come after that does not like Catholicism. So it'd be contradictory of me to get a girl who even believes in another denomination, but fundamentally she doesn't. Well, she doesn't believe in have what sex I believe. with her? Oh, that's a good question. What if I want to have sex with her? Yeah. Like, or what vice versa. Because as a Catholic, you would can't you have, do that. Would you have sex yep. with a non-Catholic girl? No, you can't. I mean, I, mean I have girl. done it, right? And I, <laughs> right. And then you go to confession, you're good. Is that what you do? Well, it's not. it doesn't work that simply, Brian. <laughs> I think it does. I think Catholic church, you go, you do whatever you got to do. You go to confession. It, it does, right? You, can, you can't you go to confession, right? You can, you, you know, pray the Hail Marys, all that kind of stuff. But if you don't mean it, it doesn't mean anything, right? If you don't actually repent for it, it's useless. It's pointless. That's like I say, okay, I'm going to be a better person. I'm going to stop beating my wife today. But then I keep doing it. I keep doing it. Oh, it's okay, baby. I'm so sorry here. Let me just make sure you so don't do beat you up the castle. So do you put that in a dating app that I need a Catholic girl? I absolutely do. You just oh, yeah, you Italians can, and Irish mostly? I, I, I yeah, definitely, you can put that. I'm, I'm, making my, I'm making my attention on the first date, 100%. Well, what do you say? How do you say that? Very simple. Hey, I just want to let you know from the jump, right, because I don't want to waste your time. I want to respect it. I want to respect my time as well. This is my religion. It's what I want to believe in, right? This is what I'm looking for in the future, right? Uh, if you don't believe in it, that's perfectly fine. You know, we can work on it. I don't like to push my religion on anything, but just so you know, I'm devoted into my faith, and that's I it. I appreciate that. I respect right? that. I could find you a smoking hot Methodist girl, and you would go out with her in two seconds. Oh, we'll see about that, man. <laughs> <laughs> he would sleep with her, Mark maybe. Mark Wahlberg's like that. Mark Wahlberg is very, like, I'm Catholic, and it uh-huh. means a lot to it. I get it, and I appreciate people yeah. whose faith is important I to them. I appreciate that But you I say don't the know why her faith matters to you. For the simple reason, right, that I date, when I date, right? Because we could talk about hooking up, that's a whole different thing, right? If it's just like whatever. But even that, I don't even really like hookup culture anymore like I used to. Mm-hmm. But if I'm talking about dating, I date for the intention of something serious, of something going long term, of something actually lasting the 50 years that we spoke about, right? right? So if I'm going to see that individual, for me, marriage, that commitment, it's not just about me and her. It's about me, her, her family, her whole lineage, right? My family connecting. It's a community Can she act. convert? Absolutely, she can oh, convert. Oh, that's a good Without question. Without a doubt. 100%. Yeah. Like, mom. if she if she chose to convert, I'm not going to force her because I don't believe in forced conversion. Right. Right. But if she chose to, if I brought her to my world and she said, you know what, I like it, I really enjoy it, I want to join this, 100%, let's do it. Without Ivanka a question. Trump converted to Judaism. Orthodox, though. Oh, yeah, that's extreme. That is extreme. That's extreme. Yeah, no, pe- people, I mean, yeah, people convert all the time, right? Yeah. But I appreciate that's about that you're sh- I, I agree. You're, but, you know, you're sharing traditions and habits mm-hmm. and superstitions in a way and all that. That there, there's some upside to that, but you put that out there in the, on a dating app. You put that on hello. You put that out there in the bar. First date. You got a rosary beads with you. At I, the club? I, I, <laughs> I don't got the rosary in the in the club, right? The, the way the way I do it, right, is uh, simply the first interaction, regardless of the setting, right. It's just the first interaction on the date. 
if we're on a date, yeah. it's because we both have a common interest in each other or else we wouldn't be there. Correct. Right? We wouldn't waste our time. Mm-hmm. So if we're on a date, I like to make my intentions very clear for, from the beginning. Because, again, we spoke about it. Most people today don't say what their intentions are. They play around. They like to extend the time. They like to play with the emotions, and that's where damage gets done. They might not know what their intentions are before the I think if they don't know what their intentions are, they should figure them out before they start going on dates. I think the dates can change your intentions. I agree with that. Chicken or egg. It can. It you know? can change it, right? But you should at least have an a idea of what ballpark idea. you are. Yeah. Yeah. I think that a lot of people are like, I don't want to get anything serious because mostly they're saying that because I don't want to get hurt. But if you gave them a document that was notarized and said, listen, if you give it every shot, you're not going to get hurt. You might have this. They would all sign up for it. Mm-hmm. They would all sign up for this happy, loving, sharing, mm-hmm. honest relationship with one other person. They all want that. Either they don't trust the document, they don't trust the notary, or they don't trust the possibilities I but agree. i still think most people want that mm-hmm. do you go out and say i'm jewish but it's no longer no. important to me no no i don't know i i just i no. like i did you back dating in the day? like a cuban back, catholic like back, I, but what did your parents yeah say? i mean b- well back in the day i i figured i would marry a jewish guy but it was never like my parents preferred that just because it can be easier and culturally and and just the background and we and reform it's not even like i'm that jewish but um that jewish. but they, but they would have as long as i'm happy as long as it's a good guy who treats me well they're fine with it now that i've been married to a jewish guy i did the jewish wedding like I don't, they don't care. I mean, if, sure, they do. Is there a certain care, uh, care. Uh, liberty in, I've been there, did that, checked it off, and now I can, the pool is open? Uh, ish, but I, I was never, like, set in, I, I was more about if I'm in, and honestly, I'm not, like, that into Jewish guys. <laughs> like, it's just like. I, I, well, oh, I know. A lot of Jewish women <laughs> say that, and it, they still have to marry them. Right, do you, yes. No, no, but I. Um, do you yeah. care, uh, um, say us, do you care uh, more about age Mm. Geography, we'll, we'll table, assume they're just a big pool of Catholic. Okay, girls awesome. Cool. Do, do you care about, um, what is the second thing you're looking for? Is it an age? Do you want somebody, you know, 22? Yeah, yeah, that would be nice, right? Someone around my age. You don't like 37-year-olds? Potentially, right? But How then, high have you dated? Have you dated, like dated, dated? Dated, like dated, uh, when I was, when I was uh, 19, Right. Um, My teacher was 42. <laughs> the second <laughs> the second girlfriend uh, was about 23. So about a four year difference. Four years older up. when you yes. then. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Good for you. So that was the, that, that's been the highest so far. Um, but typically uh, the other two were uh, either my age or like a year younger. You're very you're very mature for your age. I think. You could right, really be good. with an older woman. Right, but women are also ma- more mature at that. So you would yeah. you probably, you're very curious, you're very pensive, you're very eloquent. Having conversations, a lot of women are probably like, oh, this is a lot more, seems on the surface, mm-hmm. a lot more substantive than Brian Howie at 22 being like, you want to do a shot, you want to have a drink, you want to get out of here. Right? That's probably an advantage. A hundred percent. And, you know, a lot of conversations that I have, because I go on a lot of dates, right? Because I do like to meet people, right? I'm not just, just because I have my thing about the faith and that kind of stuff. That doesn't mean I'm closed off to learning about other people's ideas, their methodologies, their way of seeing the world. So I like to go on a lot of dates. And the common thing that always does happen is they say, wow, this is different, right? Most guys, my generation, all they want to do is, again, have the fun time, right? Not Mm -hmm. be connected emotionally, just kind of fool around and disappear, that's it. That's all that they're interested in. So you in. look at, you could go on dates as a learning experience, which is a really smart way to look 100%, at it, mm-hmm. without a doubt. No matter what, you're going to get something out of uh, a, a casual or more than casual encounter mm-hmm. connection with another human being. Without a doubt, 100%. Yeah, I agree with that. Dating's yeah. fun. It should be fun. It is. That's my whole point. Uh, the, people <laughs> that are, the people that are dating now, right? I believe, as we go around, we still do great love debate shows, um... The ones that are out there now do like it. A lot of people dropped out during COVID right. before COVID are like, it's too hard. Right. Give me my Netflix. Give me my dog. Give me my wine. I don't need this shit. Yeah. But the ones that are still out there and at least have some level of optimism, they are, and we've beaten this point into death, trying to get something out of every experience versus just tr- trying to figure out, before the check comes, do I love him? Would our kids look good together? Right. How would my last name pair with him? Like all of these things kind of do. They're like, let me just get there. And your only goal on a first date is to get to a second date. That's it. You're trying to hit the ping pong ball back and get to date two because a lot of walls will come down between date one and date two. And so if you can just not do anything to scare each other off or piss each other off and you take it to that point, 
okay, that's a building block. We went from one to two, mm-hmm. two to three, mm-hmm. and you go from there. Trying to go from date one to um, wedding date is- Some re- people think like that, though. They do think like that. Or they they eliminate them as a possibility. Oh, date yeah, one, right away. I'm, I'm almost surely not marrying them. I'm out. You should always do a second date unless you really, like, hated Right, them. or unless they, you know, spilled something flammable on you. You Fine. should go on a second date. Yes. Because- both parties are nervous on a first mm-hmm. date. Anything can happen. And you also need to change the whatever you did. Some people just aren't great at dinner. Right. Some people aren't great at miniature golf. Some people are awkward. Right. Like, what, do a second date. Give everybody a, a second chance. Yeah. You'd be surprised at how just changing that setting. How many times were you? I didn't like him at first, and then I did. Oh, agree I, with that. you hear Without that all the doubt. time. Agreed. Right. All that, But I also don't think you should ever go out to dinner for a first date. That's too with, much. No, no. Oh, never we, dinner. We've talked about never. that, too. But a lot of people are just <laughs> like, Lazy and they're like, let's go eat food and then and not everybody does that well too. Maybe just have a drink or like a basic, like not a whole meal. My, my, ribs on a date, or do you? Need I would to eat, eat whatever, else? but not on would a you? first date. Yeah, or a I would first eat ribs. date. Oh, you would. It's like funny. What? Are, mm. See, not a, right. A lot of women are like, I am not. <laughs> yes, I have my sauce women all over my that. face. Oh, okay. Yeah. Would you eat like a meatball parm? Sub? Meatballs are my favorite food. No, so like yes. a sub, like a spig. Sandwich. Yeah, and then I would wipe my face when I got marinara sauce, like what on about, my nose. What about lobster bib? I don't like lobster. Because you're Jewish? No, I just don't <laughs> like shellfish. <laughs> because you're Jewish? <laughs> no, if a guy wanted to take me to Joe's on a date, I would yeah, go. Crab, I what about crab? Like, I don't eat crab, but I would get the fried chicken. Would you whatever. wear a bib on a date? Of course. I, it, it's fun. Would you split a bucket of chicken? Yeah. Say, put that on As a long date as there's fun. wine. Oh. Wine in a bucket of chicken on the beach? <laughs> that sounds like I'm a good a cheap date. date. That sounds yeah. like South Florida. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like wine in a bucket yeah, of chicken. Yeah. There you go. That's your date. Um... What do you tend to do when you, when you like a girl? Are you like, cause your strength obviously is conversation. Mm-hmm. Do you trying to get a scenario where you can have a conversation? Do you take her? What do you do? First dates, uh, I have a pretty standard way of carrying them. It's just, let's get coffee. Right, let's get coffee. Let's get a nice no, chai latte. That's a no, job interview. No, I hate the coffee oh, no, dates. No. It feels di- like a job interview. Cause it's different. We don't just stay at the coffee shop. We get the coffee and we walk around, right? We go to like a park. We go to like around the city. I would live in Pittsburgh for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Any date that I would have in Pittsburgh, we get the coffee and literally just walk around the city. You right? can. There's a lot of neighborhoods in Pittsburgh. Exactly. Pittsburgh's South Southside Pittsburgh, walk around, explore yeah. it a little bit, having discussions about life where we see past the now, smoke do shop. Do you tell her that ahead of time? Like, let's grab a coffee and take a walk before you do it? Or you're like, let's meet for coffee? Let's meet for coffee. And then I lead her to the, to the walk. They don't like that. <laughs> My experience would say otherwise. They work for Save Us. <laughs> I know. Well, if they say that to you, I no. won't. I don't like coffee dates. But but are you? Do you drink? Do you are they drink nighttime alcohol? coffee dates? I don't really. I don't really drink alcohol. Like okay, that. fair. That's yeah. fair. Fair. Yeah, you yeah. guys. You guys just broke up. I know. <laughs> we're not gonna work. <laughs> are they nighttime coffee dates or are they daytime coffee dates? Typically afternoon. So you're doing like a three o'clock latte and stroll thing. Yes. Okay. But if it's good, then you'll have dinner later, right? And exactly. Do the whole thing. Right. If yeah. it's if it's good, I, I've had coffee dates that have literally been like six hours. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No. The best dates. Have multiple activities and they last a long time. Yeah, oh, yeah. I agree. It's like Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Like oh. that would be a <laughs> yep. date. Yeah. It is. That's, true. That's um, true. What piece of advice do you have to tell your either your friends or the males of America of any age that you... Um, I think I know what you're going to say, but <laughs> what, what piece of advice? I would be say... Be well-read? Be learned? Be I, curious? I would say two things, right? One... Work on yourself first and be a good man that could bring a lot of value to the woman, right? Into the relationship or whatever your intention is. They could bring value to her, right? A lot of people don't bring value nowadays. A lot of people just want to take value from other individuals. So if you could offer value and not ask anything in return, you know, be generous like that. A lot of people will gravitate towards you very easily, especially a lot of women. And that gives you an opportunity to find someone that you actually care about. They actually are interested in meeting. The second is don't be afraid to be vulnerable. A lot of guys nowadays are afraid to be vulnerable. I agree with that. And I like it. They, they, yeah, you should like you should like being able to share about your life, your experiences, your hardships, your difficulties. Um, regardless, women are like, I don't want to have to do the work to figure out what's wrong with you, and I know something's wrong with you. Yeah. Share what you are working on. Share that, and that just makes the connection be bonded twenty times faster. I agree with you on that. That's true. But a lot of people are scared to be vulnerable because the more vulnerable you are, the more you can get hurt, and the, you know. and the more vulnerable you are, the more you can get judged. And we're true, so trying true. to avoid that and open up. Or men are taught when you're vulnerable, it shows weakness. Uh-huh. Actually, it, it 
probably shows confidence it in does. a way, but, but the men don't know that. Correct. Mm-hmm. We, Correct. It takes us a long, long time to figure that out. Well, if out. they haven't been to therapy or they haven't done right. the work. Right, and most people yeah. in your 20s haven't gone to therapy or, true, thir- true. or any age. True. You, know? you got to go to therapy. I agree with that. Same thing. What would you tell the women? What would you say, like, here's what you should be doing more, yeah. better, different? Like, don't take it so seriously. Like, have fun with it. It's, it you're going out. It's a date. Like, it, it, it it's just go. Just have a good time. Have a positive attitude. I'm not like a woo-woo person, but I do believe energy is felt. And if you're a cynical or like, screw men, this, that, and the other, they're going to feel that. And they don't want any part of that. So I would say, have fun. Don't take it so seriously. And, um, and I, I agree with you, Sebas, about knowing yourself because, or, or at least not, yes, knowing yourself, but loving yourself and having, because if you don't, it's cheesy, but you're not going to be able to be. I, I agree with that a million percent. You have to, you have to love yourself. How quickly can we hold your hand? Right away. You can kiss me on the first date if it goes well. If <laughs> it goes the well. First date, right, right away. Like we're walking in a restaurant. Can I take your hand and lead you to Before the Before even meet or like as we meet? No, that feels weird. What oh. you mean like at the onset? Like, hey, nice to meet you and grabs my hand. And the mater D is like, follow me to table 46. Don't take the hand. No, I think that would be odd. But I also think, speaking of the dating landscape, because I'm sorry, can I ask a question? Of course. <laughs> can, um, because you are a different age. So Brian's very big on the man paying what is it you you yeah i'm a big on the guy has to pay sorry i'm very traditional very old-fashioned but, but i always pay. offer yeah, no i always offer don't do that no i don't agree with you you have to offer no, you think i don't know i ask more i've asked this question of more men and more women the men want to pay the women want him to pay the men do not want you to play your game they, they want, want you to offer no they want the thank you save they us what do you think thank you <laughs> They don't care about your so 45 So is, is the bucks. question, is the question, should you offer to pay? Should yeah. you do the fake? It's not a fake. I'm well, offering. No, I w- I'm offering. But if he accepts, you're out. Uh, no, I'll pay. I'll split right. the thing. I know, but okay. you're not going out again. Right, right. Right. He knows that. Okay, I so would say. your insincere gesture does not interest him. I would say don't offer to pay whatsoever. I say he should pay 100%. Well, yes. 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 And you shouldn't even have to offer to pay. If you offer to pay. And again, he accepts, right? Because you're opening that possibility for him to accept. Because a lot of guys nowadays don't even know what the right answer is. Because they're told one thing from like their family, another thing from society. And it's very oftentimes contradicting. Let her be her own woman. Don't let her be a woman. Be masculine. Don't really be that masculine. So it's very contradicting. A lot of guys don't really know what to do anymore. Here's okay. my role on this, which we've <laughs> talked about on the, on the podcast. For the first 30 days, he pays for everything after 6 p.m. So if you go out to breakfast or you get some movie tickets or you get want to get to lunch, pay all you want. But after 6 p.m., put your wallet away. Then when you get in a relationship, you can sort of work out the dynamic of right. who pays for want. But mm-hmm. early on, let him do Okay. That. And then if you're like, after you sleep over on the first date, which apparently is an option, you can buy breakfast in the morning. You can get a bagel. Oh, yeah, I would do that. I would, yeah. yeah, and I've done that, like lunch or whatever. Right. Or, hey, yeah. I got yeah. tickets to this. I bought, like, spend the money during the day. That's how you I'm ba- still always going to offer. Right, because if 30 days you don't pay for it, I know you are. You can do whatever you want. It <laughs> just seems great because we don't want your offer. What does your thank you sound like? It's usually like I'll offer and then they're like, no, I got it. I'm like, are you sure? Yeah, okay, Oh, thank you, you follow so much. up with the are you sure? I, the are you sure pleaser. tells him, I don't think you can afford me. Oh, God. That's what it tells him. Or no, no, it depends. Depending on the vibe, I might just say, okay, Let's thank try you so again. much. Will there be anything else? No, here's the check. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to lie. And what do you say? What? I have to agree with Brian on that. Okay. <laughs> All right, okay. let's try this. I'm grabbing for the check, and what do you do? The guy's grabbing for the yeah, check? Yeah, and what do you say? Oh, I don't grab. I'll just be like, oh, oh can I contribute? No, of course not. Do you think this is okay, a date? Okay, thank you so much. Okay, that was kind of lukewarm. <laughs> You see, that's really and then, big no, interview No, don't vibes. say it then. Then it come back. I sign my little thing. You're then, watching to see how much I tip him. I would never watch that, and but then, you better get and 20%. Then I take my card back. I put it in my wallet. And what do you say then? Thank you so much. Okay. See, that wasn't so hard. Yeah. And, he, and, and then I would happy. think again if they're dropping me off or if we're well, saying goodbye. Or, and you say, thank you. I'd love to do it again. If they, if the vibe is there. Well, but then what do you feel about the follow-up? A lot of, there's a big debate on this on if the girl can thank the guy in a text or wait like thank them again. Thank you so much again for the night or wait till the guy follows up the next day or whatever to ask them on a date. I want all the thank yous I can get. Okay. So that's not every guy thinks that. No, I'm very needy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you want a thank you? Or one is, one is sufficient? Yeah, one is sufficient. Do you want honestly. them texting you? When when it comes to setting up the second date, I set up the second date while we're still on the first. That's what you should do. That's a smart move. That is yeah. a smart move. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. I mean, th- don't break out your calendar, but no. yeah. yeah. No, tonight was fun, right? Let's do this again sometime. When are you free? No, yeah. don't ask. Say, 
don't don't ask. Are you like free that. next Wednesday? No, just say like, um, when we're doing this again. Boom, it's done. Boom. And then kiss them goodnight. Hundred percent. And yeah. then do you take them home on the first night, say bus? No, not at all. Not at all. No, 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 no. Even if you don't see a future really? with them. Even even if I see a future with them. No, if you don't see a future with them, just to get them like. Oh, you're talking about take them home, like, yeah, take, like oh, take them to them. their house, or no, take no, them to my house. Oh no, back to the say bus house of love. Oh no, no, <laughs> no? absolutely not. Good for no. you. You're better man you're than me. You're such a good guy. <laughs> oh my god, our goal at 22 was find a hot tub. Well, that- <laughs> I was the worst though. Don't be like me, kids. All right. Uh, this is both of your first time on the podcast. As I hope you know, because you listen to this podcast, we play something called worst date or first date. So starting with Julie, you either have to give us the absolute worst date you've ever been on or the greatest first date you've been on your choice. Okay, easy. I will go with, can I do both? Sure. Thank you. Um, the best first date to this day was an ex-boyfriend from in when I lived in Boston, like 15 years ago or more. We went to the top of like the whatever that building is in Boston. It was snowing. We were there like seven hours, like you said, six hours. It was like a seven hour date. And we ended up dating a year and a half. It was the best. It was just good banter. It was perfect because my whole thing is banter. There has to be good banter. And then the worst date, I hate cats, no offense. And the guy I found out on the date had a cat and I just had to get out of there. And it was just so terrible. And it just, it, it was, ter- it was terrible. Because the cat was terrible? I, Did you I judge hate him? cats. There's a theory though. Oh God. Well, a theory that we have here at the Great Love Debate because oh. we had we had a cat guy in this podcast a couple years oh, ago. Oh, I don't want to meet him. He said that cat guys are better boyfriends because cats are more difficult to please. They give less attention. They're they Fair, won't but it's show a cat. emotion. Right. But he's like, if I can be happy with the little bit of love back from my cat, it probably bodes well for you. I still won't go okay. on the date with the cat guy. So is your but- worst date just because he had a cat? Yeah, I can't remember any ba- I also was married for a while was and a I've Catholic had a boyfriend. Cat? Maybe. I don't know. He actually, I think he was Jewish. I think he was Jewish. Yeah, Jewish cat. There you go. All right, save us. There you go. So honestly, the best day is probably tied, but I'll go, I'll go with the, with this one. I'll make a decision. Best day I ever had was I was in Bogota, Colombia. Uh, I met up with this girl that I had met, uh, funny enough on Tinder and Mm. we met up, we went to a nice Juan Valdez coffee shop again, keeping it standard. And we went, and from there, we spent about seven hours with each other, and we went through every single topic about life, our view of the world, our philosophy. We walked around the mall a little bit. We went outside. We walked around Bogota, Colombia. We went to another mall, went up the stairs, went to different clothing stores. I actually took a playbook at a ha- uh, at Brian oh. and uh, did a little idea of, hey, let's go, and you find me something that you would buy me. Yeah. I'll find oh, you something that, that yeah. I'll buy you. There you go, great love listeners. He's listening. Exactly. Yeah. I'm wow. listening, right? I'm, li- I'm, I'm putting it into practice. Yeah. Did that, it went great, and then we walked around, we found this little park on the little outskirts of the city, and we just sat there, hold, sitting on a bench, holding each other, and talking about where we want to go from here. I'm going to cry. Was this in English or Spanish? This was in Spanish, 100%. Oh. What do you dream in? <laughs> uh, I dream in all three languages that I speak. What's the third, love? Portuguese. Oh, oh Portuguese. You yes. are very cool. You're like a dynamic guy. Oh, thank you very much. And you dream in all three? I do, I do. Good for you. No, thank wow. you very much. All right, tell everybody where they can find your podcast and what your podcast is. My podcast is The Sebas Perspective. You can find it on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Instagram now, and going soon on YouTube. Uh, you'll be able to find it. We talk about any single topic that you want to discuss, whether it be political, whether it be very conservative, something like lighthearted is dating. Something else is the world economic Lighthearted forum. is dating. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's like politics. Simple topics days. like dating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you compare with some of the other topics just I've like, discussed. Just like this fluff that Brian talks about. <laughs> Simple things. Uh, Ms. Julie. Uh, yes. Hashtag no filter. You can find it anywhere. It's all about, it's unfiltered conversations with very cool, <laughs> funny, inspiring, successful people. And uh, we talk about everything as well. Everything, but mostly dating relationships, sex, marriage, divorce. All right. There you go. Finish Brian's your- going to come on my podcast and I, you might I as will. well say that. I'm very much your wine. interested. Um, <laughs> this was good. Uh, if you've got questions, thoughts, disagreements, want to pay for a date, shoot us an email, greatlovedebate at gmail.com, and we will smack that ping pong ball right back at you. Go to greatlovedebate.com. I believe we have two upcoming scheduled live, live Great Love Debate tour shows. One is a makeup show in Raleigh, which we lost during COVID. We're going to do that one at Good Good Nights Comedy Club, something like that, Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, and Phoenix, I have not done a show in Phoenix in since 2015. It is time to dive back into the Valley of the Sun. Uh, go to greatlovedebate.com for tickets and information to those. And please sh- like, share, follow, please review 
this podcast, Save Us Perspective, and hashtag no filter. Your reviews mean a lot in the podcasting ecosystem because as always at the great love debate, we never stop making love. See you next time.